All right, good morning, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. It looks like all should be well. Um, I'm Christine Brown. I'm the Director of Member Engagement here at the Reno Sparks Chamber. Uh, and we've got a couple, a couple moments until uh, our call begins with Yanus Nelson and Joe Trimble uh, from Wells Fargo. I'm not sure if they're on the line yet. Hopefully they're getting close. Um, but we'll go ahead and have them give us a presentation today on um, tips for businesses as they're looking to uh, navigate the COVID-19 situation and, of course, recovering beyond uh, the COVID-19 crisis. And, of course, you know, we just got the breaking news this morning that the governor is looking to start phase one in Nevada a little bit early. So that press conference is happening today at 3 p.m. So hopefully everyone will be able to um, walk away from what they're doing or uh, put off any Zoom meetings in order to watch that press conference and hear what the governor has to say. Uh, I know we're all really eager to, we're eager to um, get everything restarted. We're eager for things to uh, become what will be our new normal. Um, and hopefully that means um, opening some of your businesses soon. So uh, Yanus and Joe, are you on the line yet? Yes, good morning, can you hear me? All right, yes, I can hear, I didn't hear you. Good. good morning. And good morning for me as well, Joe Trimble's on. All right, awesome, great to have you both here. Um, so before we get started, which will just be in a moment, I know there's still a couple folks hopping on. I just want to remind everyone to go ahead and stay muted, um, unless you're one of the three of us. Um, but we do want to take your Q&A at the end if you have any questions. So um, folks on the call, if you have any questions for Yanus or Joe throughout uh, their presentation, go ahead and just use the chat function in order to ask those questions. And we will try and use the last few minutes that we have to address some of those um, as we have time and are able. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I'll just go ahead and toss it over to Yanus and Joe. Do you mind introducing yourselves? Yeah, absolutely. My name is Yanus Nelson. I'm the Region Bank President for Wells Fargo, based up here in Reno, Nevada. What my role is, I oversee our 36 branch network we have spread out all over uh, northern Nevada. Most of them are in Reno Sparks here. Uh, we have some branches up around Lake Tahoe. Uh, in Truckee and then out uh, in the Eastern Plains, I like to call it heading out towards, towards Elko. So thank you for having me here this morning. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, and also it's worth noting that um, Janus is part of our board um, here at the Chamber and Wells Fargo is one of our partners and we are grateful, especially during these times of uncertainty. We are a nonprofit and we rely on our partners and members to keep the lights on and to keep these vital resources in the hands of all of our members. So thank you so much for everything that you are doing um, for us now and, and into the future. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right, Joe. Um, hello, everyone, and, and good morning. Uh, my name is Joe Trimble. I, um, I have the privilege of supporting small business owners in what are in our region, specifically Nevada and Northern Nevada, that um, with their needs. And I um, have fun doing that because I also grew up in a family of business owners and just had a firsthand you know, look at how and the challenges and, and what it takes to operate a small business. And um, I knew growing up that um, I, it wasn't for me. Um, I, I wanted to go a different route, but I knew I wanted to be in that educational space. So um, thank you for having me today. And it's, it's an honor to be able to talk through the resources that we have to offer. That's awesome. Uh, those who don't want to do teach and you know that is <laughs> that is a wonderful space to be in and we are grateful that you're in that space and are able to use your skills to help us today uh, so we'll go ahead and, and launch into your presentation um, to kick things off and then we'll of course see if we can do some Q&A at the end so um, you should be able to share your screen so you can go ahead and take okay. it away all right, all right, well, I'll, I'll get us started. Uh, and before I begin, I really wanna express my sincere appreciation to Anne and to the Chamber uh, to Christian for the efforts to continue to uh, advocate, inform, and connect its Chamber members. Really, I've taken it to the next level during this crisis. Um, so now what the, the daily Chamber briefings and the subject matter experts uh, really shows the value that the Chamber has to small businesses all across uh, Northern Nevada. So I just ask all of you on the call today, Please be an advocate for the chamber, share the value that's there for the small price that they pay uh, so that we can help uh, small businesses all over uh, Northern Nevada. So the purpose of our presentation today, and Kristen shared a little bit of that already, is we do wanna share some resources that are useful now, but also post COVID-19, because yes, at some point we're gonna be past this, right? 
there's a lot of resources out there for to help our small businesses, uh, not only now, but but going forward. But I do want to address uh, so a frequently asked question we get, at least with my branch network team, and it's around fraud prevention. Unfortunately, during times of crisis, that happens more. Uh, we end up seeing a lot more fraud in the bank, so we really want to get the word out there and how to protect, give some ideas on how to protect information for small business and for, for consumers alike. So I'm going to share my screen here with a few ideas that we have that are helpful. And I would say, uh, please share this with, with those that you know. So can you see my screen? Yes, it looks great. Awesome. So here's some, uh, some tips I have up there. And I, and I pulled it off of our fraud prevention site from wellsfargo.com and it's accessible for everybody. And all financial institutions are gonna have something very similar there. But it just it, I pulled a couple out of there that I, I see as timely from what we're, we interact with, with with clients that come in our branches. Uh, signing up for online billing and financial statements. This really does help reduce the risk and identity theft from stolen documents. Uh, monitor your transactions online regularly and report suspicious charges right away. Banks do have fraud protection, but it really helps us when it's reported right away. And the best way to do that is setting up account alerts. I uh, don't know if everybody's aware of how to do that, but you can set up various account alerts for clearing up checks for balances when they drop below a certain certain level or deposits coming in. And that really does help proactively manage uh, your account and account activity. Uh, this next one it, it, I see most frequently and in an advising around not giving out your account information over the phone unless if you've initiated the call. So you, we'll refer to that as phishing. So different phishing scams can be via auto dialers through phones, uh, can be via uh, uh, phishing emails, phishing texts text now. So your financial institutions will not ever correctly reach out to you and then ask you to verify your personal information that we already know. We don't do that. So if that happens, the best thing is don't respond to it. Pick up your phone, call the number that's on the back of your card or call your local banker uh, and, and, and see if they needed to get a hold of you. Uh, don't overshare on social media. I think this is something that we probably don't even think about, uh, but it's a, it is a way that fraudsters will uh, use information to, um, to per impersonate customers or businesses. And that's another big fraud that we see uh, in the banking industry is customer impersonation. So being careful and mindful about what you share on social media uh, because there are things called token questions that banks will ask. Uh, and some of those are personal related. And if you overshare on social media, it puts it at risk. Uh, don't click on link, links or open up attachments or respond to emails that come to you in places you don't know. Uh, we have an internal system where we report those to our security department. I'm sure other businesses have that as well. Keep your security uh, patches up to date and antivirus and malware up to date. Uh, that is another key thing to do. And then watch out for common scams. Uh, we, we hear about free, uh, sweetheart scams, lottery scams, and unfortunately in times of crisis, uh, fraudsters are going to leverage concerns and I put on there the last one is PPE, PPE scam so that's that personal protection equipment uh, I've seen that in the, and on the news I saw a couple of uh, indictments for multi-million dollar scams on sending out we have these personal protective equipment uh, offering to sell it but they don't have it and they end up getting the mo money wired to them so there's a couple of uh, updates I wanted to make sure everybody is aware of and please spread the word. The last thing I wanted to share was just a couple of the resource sites that we have on wellsfargo.com. And again, your financial institution will have something very similar. They're gonna have security centers where you can go out there and access the same information, some fraud, fraud prevention tips. That's where I pulled these off of from that I shared this morning. Uh, fraud, fraud prevention quiz, that's a great quiz to, uh, to take just to test your awareness around fraud prevention. Uh, and then how to report fraud. Again, all your financial institutions are gonna have something similar. So with that, I do want to turn it over to, to Joe. Uh, he called himself a small business segment leader. I call him uh, our small business subject matter expert. Uh, so <laughs> Joe, turn it over to you to take it over from here, sir. Awesome. Thank you. And just to make sure um, everyone can see my screen. Yep. Looks great. All right. Awesome. So um, thank you for the time today. Like I had started with, you know, as we think about um, our current environment and you know, really what we're focused on and, and what we're trying to strive to do is um, to really give back in a way that um, we support each other. And it's, it's great to see 
um, everything that's been going on in, in the world today, even with that, there are still some positive um, outcomes that we have to look forward to. And Giannis, you said it, shared it earlier that um, we'll, we'll get through this. And um, I truly believe that. Um, as I think about um, you all, I'm working with the chamber and um, I actually have the privilege of being part of a board of directors for a local chamber where I live here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, which is the Albuquerque Hispano Chamber. And um, I recently had a similar conversation with them and their members around um, the small business resources. When we think about um, what's out there, um, what I wanted to share today was really um, our internal way to give back, which is through our wellsfargoworks.com website. Um, this tool has a ton of information that does bring together, um, especially in today's environment, ways to improve your knowledge around your own small business by tying back um, what the economy is telling us as well as what the current environment is telling us. Um, so as we talk today, and I won't cover all of them so we can leave some time for our Q&A at the end, um, but I did want to highlight um, the topics that are covered on this site that today would build your knowledge as a small business owner operating your own small business. And as you can see on the screen there, there are six topics um, that we felt were pertinent for right now um, to highlight the power of what this site can do for you as a customer of Wells Fargo and even better news as, a, as someone who is not banking with us but is still operating a small business. And a huge thank you to all of you that do that um, day in and day out. Um, so today um, we'll touch quickly on the business plan tool um, that's available through wellsfargo.com. We'll talk through some management um, tips as well as some marketing tips that will support your small business. So first, um, I wanted to get to our business plan tool, which you know, as we think about the world today, I mean, if we thought about businesses who are essential, and I know, um, Christine, you said earlier that phase one will be coming to Nevada shortly, which will make and open up new doors for other business owners to operate in new ways. And if I think about the banking world and, and the organizations that are a part of that, um, we are in a planning mode right now. We have been for the past 30 days, um, looking at what our business plan is telling us, but more importantly, what do we need to do um, to continue to um, be in business as well as operate in safe and, and, and operate a safe environment, not only for our customers, but for our team members as well. And that plan has been an ever-changing plan, um, especially being in an, an essential business over the last 30 days. So having the opportunity to revisit your plan and to make updates to your plan that allow you to really step back and look at the information you know about your business, but really redefine yourself in, 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 in this space and really analyze what's important to your customers in your community. That's why, um, and what I know about business owners, the, the, one of the initial reasons why they start a business is to um, ensure they make a difference in, in some way with some product or with some service. And, and that's the, the, the key to success overall. Um, when we think about marketing and, and what that and how that looks today, um, there has been a lot of changes, but marketing is still taking place. I mean, it's just in a different forum. So what does your marketing plan look like? And have you had a moment to revamp that to take into effect, you know, the, the, the changes that have happened? Think about all the people now that are staying at home. Um, does it make sense to offer media through mail more than more so than ever, or maybe it's on um, television, or maybe it's teaming up with um, local resources that, that provide insights um, through that media stream, which is, um, again, a priority today. And it may be social media, um, which we know um, is very, very important right now as well. When we think about our financials, um, here's that outlook, and, and have you um, sat down and, and revamped what your financials will look like over the next three to six months based on the changes in your business um, with the analysis that you've done around your marketing and how will you apply these changes. Um, this site and, and the tool itself is a, a free business plan tool that allows you to do that. And the good news is um, for those of us that have not created a plan, um, this is the moment to do so. If, if not now, um, it, it really is 
the, one of the most important times for all of us to really wrap our arms around what does it mean to be a business owner and how do we continue to plan. Um, as we transition from the executive summary to the next slide, which takes us into the management piece of our business, um, we identified some resources that are available through the wellsfargoworks.com site that are on the screen in front of you that come in a variety of sources. Um, some are articles, some are videos, some are um, insights from real life business owners who are operating businesses in various industries. Um, they're industry experts, subject matter experts um, who have these insights. And this site, um, one thing that makes me very proud is we consistently update this constantly. And um, as I was picking through the resources, I actually used the search function on the site and typed in disaster and, and just to see you know, what was available in that space since right now we know that things are happening to our businesses um, that we were not thinking about or maybe um, we had an idea based on some plans we put in place to create some safety nets. But in reality, this is something that's new to all of us and we have to continue um, to listen to what the industry is telling us and we have the resources through this site that can help you do just that. And, and like I said, they come in a variety of fashion. Um, so it could be a video, an article, but what I will say is that every article contains additional links to take you deeper into the topic if it, that topic becomes important to you. It's one of my favorite things that this site does is it simplifies it for you business owners because I know your time is pressed right now. So having to do all of that research is not necessarily on your plate or maybe not the primary thing on your plate, but at the same time, um, having those structures in place to be able to navigate through to additional resources is critical and this site will do just that for you. Um, on our last slide, um, as we wrap up today to, to get to the Q&A, um, we did pull in some marketing resources and um, some resources that potentially could help you navigate this current environment. Um, these five that we identified um, will help you um, take a look at the internal operations of your business um, and help you put that, put that plan in place. And, and after we've organized the management structure, um, taking into account how do we start reaching out to our customers and staying competitive by increasing your visibility with your customers through an understanding of the marketplace and by generating sales and then at the end measuring your progress to know whether or not um, what you've done for your business is paying off. Um, and these resources are all decked against supporting that small business mentality, um, again, providing additional insights from those industry experts. So as I close today, um, again, I would just make a recommendation to all of you. If you haven't had a chance to sit with your relationship manager, and that helps you manage from a banking perspective, your business, um, now's the time. Um, again, um, we in the banking industry know that your businesses are important to our communities and we are decking ourselves against doing and providing that work through our team members who you interact with in our branches and also with our chambers who do such tremendous work um, to continue to support um, all of you and us. And I love the work that we do together because um, it shows that we're all in this together and we should be. Um, it's important to keep our small businesses continuing to move forward. So um, Christine, I'll pause for now. Um, Yanis, I don't know if you want to add anything in, uh, additionally. Um, if not, we can jump to the Q&A. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Just, uh, uh, again, this is all Wells Fargo labeled information, but it's open to small business all over. They don't have to be a customer of ours. So utilize these tools. Something we've learned through uh, that uh, anytime when a client comes to us for a loan, uh, gaps are around financial statements, gaps are around having a small business plan, gaps around having payroll records. I know that's come up with the uh, paycheck protection loans. So now's the time to prepare for the next time they're gonna need it. Um, so leverage the resource, whether it's from the free resource we have for all small businesses or, or work with your, your, your banker, your financial institution. I'm part of the, or we are part of the Nevada Bank Association. I'm passionate about the banking industry in, in whole. So reach out to your banker. Oftentimes you may not think about, well, they can help you with your financials or with the business plan or with a marketing plan. No banks have those tools and resources for you, so leverage those. 
That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you both for sharing your insight today uh, on both fraud protection and then also, you know, uh, things to consider for small businesses as they are looking to revise their business plans, looking to uh, revise their marketing strategy as well to, to meet the needs of the moment. So thank you both so much. And I think question one is probably, will, will these PowerPoint presentations be available for folks after the fact to reference later? Yes, and I... Did we lose you, Joe? Are you muted? Are you gone? <laughs> There we go. Yes, yeah, so it will there be. There make, sure, uh, make sure you have the this deck. So perfect. Thank you. Excellent. We would be happy. And if you wanted to attach the files in chat, you can get it out oh, yeah. right now. But we'll also, perfect. if you send them to me, we'll send them out to our members in our daily briefing also. So thank you in advance for that. Um, so once again, to everyone on the call, feel free to use the chat function to ask whatever questions uh, you may have. I have a couple. Uh, to pose uh, while you guys are thinking of some more. Um, so I think one of the things that's on my mind is, you know, the fact that in general, this, this crisis has made it clear that, you know, reopening the economy, uh, you know, going back to business as usual is not something to be done like a light switch. It's something that is happening gradually in phases. And, and we need to be prepared for that. I think for small businesses, it's, it's the same principle that the minute your doors open, it's not, things are not going to return to normal immediately. So as someone is looking at their business plan and, and looking to reopen in phases and scale up in phases, what are, what are some areas where you feel businesses can take measured risks in perhaps you know, pushing forward? And, and what are some signs of health that a business can identify as they're looking at their at their you know their own you know analysis to determine when to take those measured risks. Yes, um, Giannis, I'll start if you don't mind, and then yeah. um, feel free to jump in. So um, I'm, I'm thinking about us at Wells Fargo and some of the steps that we've taken to help manage to staying open right now. And you know, the first and foremost is to understand all of the resources that are available um, that the CDC is providing um, to ensure that we abide by what standards will be out there. Now, again, we haven't heard the governor's message yet on what this will look like, but from experience, um, I'm in New Mexico and we've already started phase one and um, the business owners that we've engaged with, um, the first step is how can I turn my business in a way that allows me to reach customers with the same product or service I was offering. So whether it be moving from an in-person meeting, and uh, my niece is actually doing this with her vocal coach, it's now gone to Skype. So can we use Skype in a way that helps us reach customers in that service space for the, 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 the sell space and this would be the measurement that I would keep my eye on as a business owner is what, what are the products that I'm going to continue to offer? We've seen a lot of innovation recently with small businesses revamping even the products that they sell, but how did they leverage those products? And one of my favorite resources that I continue to provide customers are some of those great technology tools that are out there like um, mer merchant processing that allows you to leverage um, technology to turn your business to a, in, a, in a way that meets the customer's needs, whether it be um, now your product goes out to the curb for pickup, um, whether you're adding in shipping and now um, you need to deliver that product and, and still make your, your margin in your, your cost of goods sold. So um, how do you continue to leverage all of that? And that's where I feel um, having that conversation with, um, yourself at the chamber as well as your banker and even those people that you advise for your business is the first step as you start to build that plan. But um, My measure of progress, um, and, and I've been doing this with some of the boards that I sit on, is first knowing what my forecast will look like and that's through my cash flow. Um, so having the opportunity to create your cash flow statement today and then do a couple variations of it to set some goals in line for yourself as you make these switches, will you see that cash flow improve? Um, and again, with the cash flow statement, the benefit of it is you can see month over month those changes. Um, so I would keep my eye on my cash flow, whether it's positive or negative, and really monitor those costs, um, whether they be 
um, uh, uh, coming into my business or going out as expenses. And then I'd start there, Christine, is what I would do. That's great. That's great advice. And I completely echo your sentiment that necessity has been the mother of all sorts of invention during this time. And I, I know I've been really impressed with our business community and how so many of our, our, our member businesses have pivoted during this time, have figured out a way to keep things going. I mean, of course, some of the examples we hear about all the time are our distilleries and our breweries, you know, pivoting to making hand sanitizer. I mean, that's just one of so many examples um, of how people have risen above during this time, and it's fantastic to see. Um, so I think another, another question um, that, that I would want to ask you, you know, is, has to do with, you know, starting a new business or expanding a business. So I, I would imagine that even some folks on this call, I know some of our members fall into this camp, were either looking to start a new business or to expand their business before this crisis began. And of course, now the landscape is entirely different. So what advice would you give to someone who was thinking about doing that before and is wondering if and when the right time might be to do that in the future? Yeah, Jonas, I'll jump in again if you don't mind. Um, so I, I say seize the day. Um, that, that's, that, that's, that's me personally, you know, thinking about today's environment. And this is what makes it very unique is not everyone is impacted in the same way mm -hmm. um, you know, think about industry types. And I have a few running through my head as you were asking that, that question that are probably seeing increases in business more right. than these is. And, and no, that's not everyone's case, but you know, we have to, we have to analyze their business and figure out what is it they're doing and what are they offering. And if I could help either mirror my business, and this is where innovation to me turns into collaboration and how business owners really work together to start to put into place um, these new ways of supporting each other and really capitalizing on those types of businesses. And you mentioned the brewery and the distilleries, you know, in that space, really identifying um, a new product. But again, I don't think it has to necessarily be a new product. It could be a way to better improve your product through that collaborative approach. I mean, we did one at Wells Fargo um, a couple years ago where we teamed up with American Express and we're both in the same industry type, but we had, we had very similar benefits for our customers, but we knew um, that each of us could do something better than the other. And we had to leverage those talents with each other to make that happen. So um, as I think about, um, you know, really your, for a business owner, um, it, it, it's that collaborative space that I would start to contemplate. But if we're thinking about opening a business, um, it, it, right, we've seen in recession, a, a great businesses come out of it. So I feel confident that it can happen, but I will say a plan is critical to making it happen. So if you're thinking about starting a business, your first step should be a plan. And then if we're thinking about expanding, your plan will be important as well. But um, I, where I would expand my business, I would consider economic indicators. For instance, um, our interest rates right now. So it, do I have an opportunity to borrow? Um, should I borrow? How do I manage that credit? Will it be manageable through my cash flow, which again ties back to my previous answer, knowing your cash flow statement and, and projecting that for 12 months, it will truly be important um, to understand whether or not expansion is doable. So I would reflect on my previous 12 months and then I would project my future 12 months. If I saw positive cash flow with the changes I would make in my business, then like I said, I would seize the day. That's yeah, in my, my advice, not only start a new business, but when uh, the governor allows to small business to open up again is consider the operational challenges. We've been living in it as an essential business the last six weeks. And if you've been any of the banks, and it's not just well of any of them, uh, they've changed how they operate, limited hours. Uh, we've had to calculate how many team members and customers we can have inside of our buildings at one time to ensure social distancing. Uh, the layout of our of our branches, uh, all of that needs to be considered. And then also, how do we balance that with virtual and online and mobile options, mobile ordering, mobile payments? So I think uh, expanding that, it, it's not only, oh, it would be nice to do that. I think in, the, in this new future, you're, you're going to have to do that. If you're going to be a small business, you're going to have to offer some type of, of mobile ordering, mobile virtual payments. 
because uh, I know the, the governor is big on that contactless payment, yes. uh, contactless ordering. I know we started the curbside retailing uh, over the last week or so. Uh, so it's going to be critical. So really thinking through the operational challenges, uh, building that into your plan and building into your cost structure because it's going to look different. Uh, thinking about team member safety and, and customer safety. Oh, you know, how is that going to impact uh, cost structure, et cetera? So, right. Um, yeah. Right. The days of having, the days of, of needing an online marketplace were already here, but now they are cemented. It, having an online marketplace, an online presence, online marketing, those are all crucial to, to any business now. Uh, not just not just to survive, but to thrive in this time. So thank you, thank you for that insight. Um, I think you know we. I'm not seeing any questions come in chat, um, but I think to close, I, I'd like to just ask each of you the same question, um, just as a closing thought. What is one thing that you would say is a sign of hope for the businesses on this call right now, and what is a, a, a caution that you would issue to every business on this call right now? I'll share my my sign of hope is we're getting options uh, from the standpoint of uh, closing everything down for, for safety absolutely uh, but I'm in the in the mindset we have to do both uh, we have to build a, a operate as a society you know as best we can safety for the health of all citizens in the United States and in Nevada uh, but we also have to figure out a way to operate in this environment. And I think we've moved through a period where we weren't looking at those options or the, the same level of urgency wasn't applied to how do we do both as it was to the safety and security. And, and coming from an essential business, we've had to do that. We've had to figure out how to do both. And I think when we give an opportunity to our small business owners to figure it out, they're going to figure it out. So I think that's a sign of hope that we're giving them opportunity to figure out how to happen. Uh, a source of caution, I would say, is as we move forward slowly through this, uh, not all employees are going to respond the same. They're all coming from different worldviews, different backgrounds. They'll take this uh, this crisis to, at different levels of of seriousness for themselves, uh, and being able to manage through that, uh, so that you have the the appropriate safety protocols in place, even with teamers that maybe don't take it as seriously. But that's been one of our challenges as well. Right. That is such a good point. You're, you're absolutely right. Some employees may not want to come back to work unless there are certain assurances in place when it comes to PPE, when it comes to the volume of people who are in a room at any given time. So these are all things that, that are going to be really interesting to, to see in the workforce moving forward, absolutely. So, so Joe, what would your response be to those two questions? Yeah, I mean, for the hope piece is I've seen individuals shift from somewhat of a panic to optimistically cautious, which mm -hmm. is a good indicator that, to Giannis's point, is innovation doesn't have a chance to bloom and doesn't have a chance to grow in our world today. And, and, and just from history itself um, and what it's proven is that human beings are resilient and we're adaptable. And um, I see that as our advantage as we move forward um, especially in the small business space. If anyone can be innovative, it's the group of individuals who operate small businesses. And I 100% believe that. So um, that would be my, my indicator of hope. Um, for a portion of caution, um, urgency has become so critical right now. And I, I feel um, at times we move faster than what we uh, give ourselves credit for. So being urgent, I don't necessarily feel we have to lean into as hard. Because all of us, especially in small business, and you said it, Christine, you may open your doors and what you thought the day was going to look like is completely different. So um, we need to remain calm. Um, and that would be the, the message and, and the caution is, um, you know, lay out your goals and plan. And I used this word a few times and plan. Um, that will help alleviate that concern of urgency and keep your mind grounded in how you support your small business. Right, absolutely. Consumer confidence is going to be a huge piece of the puzzle moving forward. Are we able to provide an environment where consumers feel safe to enter into it again? And of course, you know, there, there's a lot of sentiment out there where some people are unafraid and ready to go and ready to march ahead and others are more cautious. So we do have to balance that sense of urgency of responding to the needs of the moment and making sure that we're ready to open our doors when we get the go ahead but also making sure that we're thinking through, we're thinking critically, that we're analyzing 
all of our all of our all of our moves and 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 counter moves and and how the market is responding and how consumers are responding. So it's it's good to act and pause and act and pause to yeah. make it through this crisis. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and then learn from each other. And that's the great thing yeah. of these these webinars, right? Is an opportunity to learn from each other. I mean, it'd be fine to reach out to your bank if you want to find out how do you operate uh, in our current environment with social distancing and limiting people in. All the banks have been doing this, right? Uh, we've seen the Home Depots do it, the Costco's, but our, our banks have been doing it. And a lot of their facilities are more similar to uh, small businesses. Right. So, so mm-hmm. reach out to them for guidance as well. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I want to thank you both as we're closing out the call and, and running out of time. Thank you both for your expertise and, and thank you in advance for sending out that, uh, that content, those PowerPoint presentations as a resource uh, for our members. Um, thank you everyone for being here. We really appreciate you and, and we encourage you to, to keep enduring through this crisis and reach out to us, reach out to the chamber uh, for, for help, for assistance. That's why we're here. And we're here to serve you. So um, thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.